Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. Today we will be painting up a Primaris Chaplain from the Indominus box set. Now I've already assembled the entire model. There doesn't look like to be anything in the way that'll get in the way of painting, except for the backpack, so I kept that separate. And if you look closely, you'll notice I did not texture this model. Why is that? Well, I forgot. Now starting off with Ironbreaker, we're going to paint every single piece of the armor, and a little bit extra, including the gun and stuff the ceramotite armor. We're going to paint it Ironbreaker all over as our base layer. Once that is done, we're going to take Abaddon Black and Nuln Oil. We're going to mix it together and we want to make sure it's uh, not that opaque but still runny and we're going to apply it all over the model. But now for me, I had to apply two coats of this, because I didn't make it dark enough and I just went with it. But in the end, it looked pretty good. I then went back with Iron Breaker and then lightly dry brushed on all the edges Iron Breaker. I wanted to, uh, I don't really want to dry brush the inner plates, I just want to make sure the lines and edges are dry brushed. And now with Corn Red, Mephiston Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, and Agrax Earthshade, we're going to paint his cloak. Now, because he's a chaplain and a Black Templar, and I want him to be distinctly different from the other guys with cloaks, I'm going to make sure he has a red cloak. So we're going to start off with a base layer of Corn Red. Once that's done, we're going to go with Mephiston Red, and we're basically going to cover like 80 to 90 percent of the entire cloak with Mephiston Red. And once that's done, we're going to go and highlight with Evil Sun Scarlet maybe like eh, 40 to 50% of the cloak, the raised areas, the edges, and the edges of the bottom of the cape. And once that is done, we're going to get Agrax Earthshade and we're going to apply one layer all over the cloak. And then once that's done, we're going to go back with Evil Sun Scarlet and we're going to do a fine highlight on all the edges of the cloak and the upper raised areas. Use your judgment on this. Now if you wanted to, you could do it in even lighter like orangish or yellowish cover color on the highest raised areas for extra level highlights. But because of the plague, I haven't been able to get my hands on it. almost no new paints. Now with AK Interactive Ultra Matte, we're going to apply this and seal in the cape. Because we use a lot of thin layers, it's easy for this stuff to be scraped off, so this will protect it. But also, this uh, specific type of varnish will make the cloak seem more clothy or leathery. And now with Rakkarth Flesh and Doom Bull Brown, we're going to paint the shaft of his Crozius. We're going to start off with Rakkarth Flesh, and we're going to paint the entire handle this color. Once that is done, we're going to take Doom Bull Brown and water it down a lot. It's not a wash, but it's very thin, and we're going to apply this all over the handle. And what this is going to do is it's going to flood the recesses and naturally highlight itself if it's thin enough. And now with Rhinox Hide, we're going to paint the leather belt that he has all around his waist.
And now with Steel Legion Drab, Bane Blade Brown, and Nolan Oil, we're going to paint the Purity Seals. We're going to start off by layering them all in Steel Legion Drab. Once that is dry, we're going to take Bane Blade Brown and we're going to highlight all the edges of the paper, the center pieces, and the raised areas. We want to cover like maybe 60 to 70 percent of the purity seals in Bane Blade Brown. And once that is dry, we're going to give it all a shade of Nuln Oil. Once that is done, we're going to go with back with Bane Blade Brown and we're going to highlight the edges, the most raised areas, and a few places in the center. It depends on the purity seal because they some of the times they have really sharp folds. And now with Fenrisian Gray, Abaddon Black, and White Scar, we're going to paint the shoulder pads, elbow pads, and the center of the backpack. Starting with Fenrisian Gray, we're going to use this and cover the entire center piece of all three pieces. Once that is done, we're actually going to take the micro pen, a 0.25mm one, and we're going to mark out the places on the shoulder pad for the X. After marking, we're going to take a very thin brush and some watered down Abaddon Black and we're going to try to fill that in and draw it out. Now this is a process, this is a back and forth process of filling it in with Abaddon Black and then going back with Fenrisian Gray and sharpening it. This is a constant back and forth process, it's like molding clay or something. It takes several tries to get it right, you won't get it right on the first time and over a period of time and with a good brush you'll be able to slowly eventually be able to make the sharp lines. And once that is done, we're going to take White Scar White and we're just going to fill in all the Fenrisian Gray. And now with Cadian Flesh Tone, Agrax Earthshade, and Kislev Flesh, we're going to paint the guy's head. We're going to start off with a layer of Cadian Flesh Tone. Once that is done, we're going to take some watered down Agrax Earthshade and just apply it and make sure it fills the edges of his head or where the skin is. And once that's done, we're going to take the Kalian Flesh Stone and we're going to highlight the flat of his head, the back of his head. We're basically going to fill in all the gaps. But we're not going to fill in basically like his wrinkles on his face or the burrow of his brow, or burrow of his brow. And once that is done, we're going to take the Kislev flesh and do fine highlights on all of his features, and we're going to paint uh, strips or lines on the top of his head. And now with Mornfang brown and Gulliman flesh, we're going to paint the book that he has on his back. We're going to start off by coating the outside, the cover of the book, with Mornfang brown. After being coated in Mornfang Brown, we're going to cover it in Gulliman Flesh and give it a layer all over. Now once that is done, I then go back with Mornfang Brown and I fill in and edge all the highlights. Only the deepest recesses and imprints on the book stay pure Gulliman Flesh. And once that is done, I decide that it is not good enough, so I go and get some XV88. And using a one-to-one -one mix with XV88 and Mornfang Brown, I then highlight the edges and certain areas on the book, what it looks like it has like lines in it, so I highlight those and make the book stand out more.
And going back to Rhinox Hyde, like before, we're going to go and we're going to paint the stone that he is standing on. Now we're going to make this base in the same way we have made all our bases for like the intercessors and stuff like that. So if you want to know how to do that, you can go back to that video and see how I did the bases. While that was drying, I then used AK Interact Ultra Matte to apply this to the book and the purity seals and to, well, make him look more leathery. I then super glue him onto the base. And then using the Army Painter Anti-Shine Matte Varnish, I then apply this on all the major parts where the model could be grabbed, like his legs, his feet, his, uh, the top of his backpack, parts of his arms and stuff. And what this thing does is it does seal it in, it has no yellowing effects, but it also, it says anti-shine, but it makes metallics shine. So, make of that what you will. And now with Skeleton Horde Contrast and Golem and Flesh Contrast, we're going to age and uh, add some wear and tear to the exhaust ports onto the model. I'm going to take Skeleton Horde Contrast and coat all the little metal ports in it and on the backpack. And once that is done, we're going to take the Golem and Flesh and we are going to apply it into the centers of the ports, but we're also going to take this and we're going to apply it to the flesh of the guy. Since he has a metallic parts there, I'm gonna make it look like the flesh is like scarred or wounded in there, and so adding this Gilliman flesh to that spot will help with that. And if you'll notice, uh, I didn't mention that that I painted that. I used Iron Breaker and I painted all the silvery metal parts on him Iron Breaker. The reason why I didn't show that is because my camera died right as I was doing it and I didn't have any footage of it. And now with Steel Legion Drab, Bane Blade Brown, and Agrax Earthshade, we're going to go and we're gonna paint bones. We're going to start with Steel Legion Drab, and this is going to be our base layer. His left knee pad is a skull. We're going to paint that, and the iron halo thing that he has has a skull in the middle. So we'll be painting that with Steel Legion Drab. Once that is done, we're going to apply Agrax Earthshade next. There's many different ways you can apply this back and forth or between the colors after the first base coat and it makes it look different. So for this one, to make it look a little bit different than the other ones that have bone, I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade right after the Steel Legion Drab. Once that is done, I'm going to go back with the Steel Legion Drab, and I'm going to highlight all the areas of the skull. Like, eh, 70 to 80 percent of the skulls will have highlights. And then I go back with Bane Blade Brown, and while I'll cover the most of the back of the skull and stuff, I cover the raised upper half of the skull, or the back of the skull. As far as the fine details of the face part of the skull, it'll cover only the highlighted raised areas or edges. And then with Corn Red, Mephiston Red, and Evil Sun Scarlet, we're going to go paint the purity seals. We're going to start off with a layer of Corn Red. I'm going to paint the wax part of the purity seals. There are some seals that are held by what looks like clear metal pieces, so we will ignore those. Once that is done, we take the Mephiston Red and we'll paint the entire ring of the purity seals and the center. We want to leave a corn red ring in the middle between the center and the outer edge. And once that is done, we're going to take Evil Sun Scarlet and we're going to paint the ring, but like the upper 50 to 60 percent of the ring and then like a dot of it in the center. And then with Vallejo Liquid Copper, we're going to paint parts that are going to be complicated. We're going to paint his knee pad there, the jewelry that is hanging, we're going to paint his Crozius, the weapon part, and the pommel.
And then with Vallejo Liquid Gold Old Gold, we're going to paint the outer edges of his Crozius. We're going to paint a lot of the outer edges of the jewelry, his knee pad, the raised area. So we still want the copper to shine through the tops of the skulls and his chest piece. We'll also be painting, I don't show it here, but like his uh, leg guards, the front have like this place that'll have gold uh, trim. We're gonna apply it there as well. And then with Vallejo Liquid Gold Gold color, which is a much lighter gold, we'll use this as a highlight on many of the raised areas that have received the old gold. And then with Vallejo Liquid Silver, we're going to use this as a fine highlight on the very most raised areas of all the gold pieces. Just little drops here and there and fine edging on certain uh, shoulder plates and such and such. And somehow I didn't get footage of it, but then I edged the base with Mornfang Brown. Well, a project well done. Now, I wanted to make sure the chaplain was noticeably different than the others, so I made sure to give him a red cloak. That was one of the key things. The other thing is, is his face and the cybernetics. The effects of the Goleman flesh lining the edge of his uh, the transition between flesh to metal makes it look pretty good armor looks pretty good a good black you can see the silverish uh, edging his jewelry looks good overall this is pretty good I'm pretty happy with the crosses as well as well as the handle for the crosses turned out very well for being very simple overall I give this uh, an 8 out of 10 it did really good but uh, the base uh, is a little bit different than the others <coughs> I accidentally didn't apply enough of the pigment powder in this time compared to the other time so it looks noticeably different but oh well chest piece looks good head looks good the whole body looks good there's no real flaws I had to do a bunch of little touch-ups off camera because I just made a bunch of smaller mistakes this time I really like his gold trim and he really does have a lot of good color in him so good project so like the video if you like the video comment if you have anything to comment uh, share if you want to share it uh, there'll be more coming. My next project will probably be the Primaris Lieutenant as a build-up to the guys with the shields and the captain. Alright, see you then. Bye.